This is The Fifth Estate, a conversation between young African scholars from the Fort Hall School of Government and Professor Mutahi Nguni. This Sunday, we unapologetically declare that we are suspicious of democracy. In fact, we mistrust it completely. The Austrian political economist Frederick von Hayek once said, to choose democracy is not to secure freedom. Millions are known to vote themselves into total tyranny in the name of democracy. And so we ask, if democracy is not liberty, are we about to commit collective suicide by transitioning to a parliamentary system? Or are we sitting on a ticking time bomb by retaining the presidential system? Should we just throw both democratic systems away and chart our own African political destiny instead of adopting imported, convoluted, muzungu-crafted democratic chains? On this, Fort Hall scholars are conflicted. In fact, as we question democracy, we're also beginning to question baptism as well. Why is it that to get baptized, Africans have to acquire a Muzungu name? A name that is not even in the Bible. An English name. Have we been cheated by Muzungus? Yes, Africans have entered the age of questioning. And we must not be afraid to question everything. Was Jesus black, for instance? Did he have a big African nose or did he have a Muzungu nose? Some people say it doesn't matter, but we call this identity theft. The African identity was stolen from us. And that is why we all have Muzungu names and a Muzungu picture of Jesus on our walls. I have another uncomfortable question. Is the Old Testament the history of the African people? Are Africans the real Hebrew Israelites? And was the Garden of Eden in Africa? If it was not in Africa, how come scientists the world over have agreed that the original man lived in Turkana? What about the pyramids of Egypt? Were they built by African architects using technology that remains a mystery to science? Were the pharaohs of Egypt black? If not, why did the explorers break their big African noses to conceal their identity? Where am I going with this? Kenya, like most African countries, is on a false path. And parliamentary or presidential systems are not the truth. The truth lies in finding ourselves. The Muzungu trick question for Kenya is whether we want stability or speed. And we must repeat here that Muzungu is not color. Muzungu is attitude. An attitude that portrays Africans as stupid. This Muzungu attitude taught us that stability is superior to speed. If stability gives us economic stagnation, it is better than unrest. We bought the fake argument. And both parliamentary and presidential systems are part of this argument. But then the Chinese came to town. They exposed the Muzungu lies. They are now teaching us that speed is superior to stability. That speed will cause some economic unrest, all right, but it will take us further than Muzungu stability has. In 10 years, the Chinese speed has taken us further than the Muzungus have in 200 years. Fact. The question for Kenyans is therefore this. Between a parliamentary system and a presidential system, what will give us speed? If Moses was cheated by Muzungus to form a River Nile assembly of slaves made up of MPs to represent the 12 tribes of Israel, would they have left Egypt? Zero. They left Egypt because Moses was a dictator. He whipped them out of slavery period. 
If Africans are the ones that build the pyramids, this high civilization was made possible only because there was a complex government in place. What happened to it? If such a government could build complex pyramids where a razor blade could not fit between the stones because of precision, where did this type of government go to? Let me pose this question differently. The Muzungus came to Africa. They took our strong men. Then they made them slaves and changed their names the way they changed our names through baptism. Bitten to submission, these slaves built America. In fact, the White House, Washington, and New York were built by African slaves. Years later, they came for our resources. They took and took. This is how Europe was built. If America was built by slaves, Europe was built by the resources stolen from Africa. Fact. But all along, the complex African governments that built the pyramids were nowhere. They could not save the African slaves or stop the theft of our resources. And this is a puzzle before us. In my view, Kenya is the one to revive the complex governments of the pyramids. To become the leading economy in Africa by 2032, our government must be complex, parliamentary or whatever. Kenyans are looking for a permanent solution to a temporary problem. We are looking for permanent brain surgery to solve the temporary problem of a weekend hangover. If you have a weekend hangover, all you need is another drink to remove the lock, not brain surgery. Yet Kenyans are asking for brain surgery instead of asking for another drink. Put differently, the problem of William Ruto is a temporary weekend hangover. To craft a permanent solution to stop the Ruto hangover is to miss the point. But I could also be wrong. But in the meantime, Kenya was identified by the World Bank as the leading economy in Africa by 2032. And the question is why? Nigeria has oil, South Africa has minerals, and Egypt has everything. Yet Kenya is set to overtake all of them in 20 years with nothing. Why? I ask. Honestly, I have no idea, but I have a thought. Instead of asking what system of government we need in a referendum, we should be asking where we are going first. If we identify our destination, then we can ask what system of government will take us there, parliamentary or presidential. And that, in my view, should be the referendum question. Where are we going and what system of government will take us there? It is that simple. And now, our final thought. Gary Hamel, in his book, Leading the Revolution, taught us to celebrate the stupid. If an idea is not considered a stupid round one, it is not worth pursuing. Out of every 20 stupid ideas, one changes the world. Yahoo was a stupid idea dismissed by the so-called thought leaders of industry. And so was Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter. If it is not stupid, you must not celebrate it. In my view, we must ditch both the Muzungu systems of parliamentary and presidential democracy. We must return to our founding fathers and their Lancaster logic. Maybe we should adopt a system where all the 45 ethnic groups elect their tribal leader by lining up behind him or her. And those without a tribal chief can line up behind a man with the head of a coconut. 
Once the 45 tribal leaders are elected, they choose a leader amongst themselves to become the national supreme leader. He becomes head of state. In the meantime, parliament chooses a head of government or prime minister. In my view, a ceremonial president should be elected by tribes and a prime minister by Muzungu-like parliament. <laughs>